grade. So I've chosen to split up the assignments this week into what we're doing in class and then what is to be done at home, aka asynchronous work. So basically, um, we're going to be looking in class, okay, at a Google Slides presentation, okay, and we're going to be watching a series of videos and there's a couple of questions that you'll answer within that um, Google Slides presentation. For the asynchronous work, um, a lot of it is read this, answer these questions, um, or watch this short video, answer these questions. Um, I've created a video that we'll play after this one um, that reads through the entire presentation, okay, before I chopped it up, basically. And so, um, so regardless of if you are here in person um, or if you are completely virtual, you do have, um, you know, a way to look through this um, you know, or have it, you know, guide you guided through it. Okay. So I read through the whole presentation with you. Um, and you know, we don't watch the videos in that, but you have to click on the videos yourself and all that. So, um, there is some copying and pasting in there. Um, so, you know, looking for this type, like this type of puppet on Google. So if you don't know how to copy and paste, you need to look that up. Um, I highly find it highly unlikely that you don't know how to do that, um, at this point in the year. Um, but if not, you need to ask a family member for help or um, type it into Google, um, ask that question, okay? So figure out how to do it. Don't just like, I don't know how to do it, so I didn't do it, okay? Um, but yeah, so this will hopefully be a fun little thing for this week um, as we are testing this week again. Um, but make sure that you get this, um, you know, this work that is outside of school in. We had a, a little chat about that um, in class last week about how um, many of you don't end up doing that work. So please, please, please get that, um, get that work turned in so that you get credit for attendance, okay? All right, I will see you on Monday or on Thursday. Hi, sixth grade. All right, so this week, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making our way through this puppetry um, PowerPoint. And um, cohort A is gonna start at the beginning with me um, on Monday. Um, and cohort B, you're gonna be starting at the beginning um, as part of your asynchronous work. And then we're gonna be doing um, the latter half of it in class on Thursday. So basically, everybody's gonna do the whole entire thing um, just at slightly different times in a slightly different way. Um, but we did this um, last semester um, virtually and um, you know people learned a lot so that's my hope. All right so here we go. Um, we will go through these slides together as a class. Um, if you're in class you can work along with us and if you're not in class you can complete this on your own. So basically it's very easy to do this um, digitally. All right, so here are the instructions. Each day we'll work through a few of the slides. Um, so again, this is slightly different since we're gonna be in person, um, but I'll be checking these. This whole um, slideshow needs to be finished, um, you know, by the end of Friday, okay? All right, so um, here's our first video, Puppetry on Broadway by King, well, it's about King Kong. So you're going to click on the link here in the PowerPoint, okay, and then you're going to answer these two questions. So when you click on the link, um, you'll get to this video, okay, and it gives this really interesting um, background about um, this huge puppet, King Kong, and then how this actress works with him. Um, and you're going to then answer these two questions. So how many people does it take to run the King Kong puppet on Broadway? And then where are the facial expressions and vocalizations run from? So like in the theater, how do they make that happen for King Kong? Okay. And again, pause this as you're watching the video and then, you know, come back to this if you want the instructions read to you. All right. 
Next slide, slide number four, puppet design. So you're going to watch this video, so click the link at the bottom, and this is about um, the designing of puppets for, um, you know, one of them is from The Lion King. So um, what is something that surprised you about puppet building? So again, you're answering that in complete sentences. So I was surprised that blah, 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 blah. Okay. So again, you're writing in a complete sentence. What's something that you discovered about puppet building? So something that I discovered was that, or was, da, 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 da. Okay. All right. So pause if you're going to watch the video. Or when you watch the video. All right. Slide number five. So puppetry on Broadway, The Lion King. So again, you're going to click on the link. Okay. And it'll take you to this video. Um, if you've never heard of The Lion King on Broadway, and if you ever get the chance to see it's it's amazing. Then we're going to look at types of puppets. Okay, so we're going to go through the next couple slides and you're going to do a little bit of research um, of that. So sock puppets. Okay, so you're going to watch this video. Um, Lamb Chops Play Along was a, um, a popular show in the like early 90s or so um, with this woman named Sherry Lewis. So, all right, so then about sock puppets, you're going to answer, what did you notice about how Lamb Chop moves her mouth and body? Okay, and most of us have probably put our hand in a sock before and been like, burr, 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 or whatever, right? So how is the mouth, okay, and the body, okay, how do they work, okay, in a sock puppet? Then you're going to click over and open a new tab. Okay, and you are going to um, search in Google for three pictures of sock puppets, and you're going to paste those pictures here. Okay, if you don't know how to copy and paste, that's a problem. Hopefully, you know how to do that. Um, if you don't, Google how to copy and paste. Okay, then you're going to, what are five possible materials that you might need to make a sock puppet? Okay, so you will, or when you make a sock puppet, you need, cool, yeah, all right, so stick and rod puppets, so we are on slide number nine, okay, so you're going to search the internet, okay, and find a bit about stick and rod puppets, so you're going to answer the following questions, what's the difference between a stick and a rod puppet? Okay, and then you're going to find two pictures of stick puppets and paste it on the right. See in the pink? And then you're going to find two pictures of rod puppets and you're going to paste those on the left. Okay, so again, you have to open up a new tab um, and search the internet. Okay, so then we're going to talk, look and talk about Jim Henson, um, which I see that the link for that is not... Um, make sure that. Mm. Hold on. Make sure that this is there. Okay. All right. I've got the actual link there. I've noticed that sometimes um, you guys aren't quite as familiar with what a hyperlink is. So, like, see how this is underlying, and I click on it, then this appears. But sometimes kids get confused. So anyway, the um, the YouTube link is right there to click as well. All right. So when you, after you watch that, okay, then you're going to read this, or you're going to listen, because I'm just going to read it for you. Here we go. Materials and construction. Muppets are constructed of foam, rubber, and other soft materials, including felt, fleece, and fun fur. Soft materials are very important because they allow a Muppeteer to have a wider range of expression for the character. Muppet bodies are now made of a special material called reticulate articulated polyfoam, a flexible type of foam that can easily be cut and carved because it's flexible. I'm sorry, because of its flexibility. They were controlled with rods instead of strings in order to give the puppeteers a greater range of movement possibilities. They have a common look that has been adapted for each individual puppet, although, let me move my, I can't read that, please. Although it's based on Kermit the Frog. How do I move that? Goodness gracious. Okay. So, next. 
performance style. Jim Henson helped to pioneer bringing puppets to the film screen. The frame of the camera became a stage for the puppet and everything was expertly filmed as to not reveal the puppeteer hiding beneath the camera frame. Muppets are also more complex to operate and to film because they often interact with human actors on the screen and therefore filming has to be extremely well done so that the Muppeteer isn't revealed. Several people slash Muppeteers may operate one puppet at a time. Over the course of time, Muppets have become animatronic, so some are electronical. Electronical, I don't know if that's a word. Well, anyway, they're electric and can be operated away from the actual puppet by a separate puppeteer. They can be controlled um, all sorts of ways. Often these features are used to raise eyebrows or do other intricate expressions. The Muppeteer. So if you look, isn't this interesting? So like, I always have to picture this when I'm looking at Sesame Street and when I'm watching it and thinking that like, these Muppets are like, you know, seven feet up in the air, eight feet up in the air. Um, and that you have this person that they're looking at this TV screen down here, which kind of, if you've ever watched the news people do the weather, you know, they're not actually like when they, when they're showing you that stuff, they're looking someplace else. And anyway, it's a kind of an optical illusion. So, all right. So I'm going to see this, um, in action. Okay. And so when you look at this, what do you notice about the way that they're performing with the puppets? Okay. So that's one thing you want to see. And this is definitely no one is social distancing here. All right. Some interesting facts. So uh, the earliest version of Kermit the Frog can be traced to 1954 on a televised program that Jim Henson created while still in college called Sam and Friends. The first Muppet was Rolf the dog. The original Kermit the Frog was crafted out of Jim Henson's mother's coat and a pair of ping pong ball eyes. Sesame Street debuted in 1969 and The Muppet Show, an evening variety TV show, debuted in 1960, I'm sorry, 76. The first Kermit the Frog actually wore a red sweater and did not have his signature frilly collar. In 2004, Disney acquired the rights to the Muppet Production Company. Because of the majority of Muppets are operated by a Muppeteer, placing the Muppet on their heads, sets have to be an extra five feet taller to accommodate the height of the puppets. The name Muppeteer was given to the puppeteers who operated the Muppets, but was not approved by Jim Henson. He said, I'm a Muppet performer or a Muppet puppeteer. I am not a Muppeteer. So it's kind of interesting that he, he didn't like that name. Okay, so now based on those interesting facts, you are going to answer, what year was Sesame Street created? What year was the Muppet Show created? What is the regular height of a Muppet set? Who were some of the famous Muppeteers mentioned in both videos? And how was the word Muppet created? Then, who were the, whoops. Again, I don't know why this is that, like it's changed color. Anyway, um, who were the top 10 Muppets according to the video? So you're gonna click this, okay, and I'm gonna copy this and put it here so that you don't have any confusion. Okay, and so you're going to list who those Muppets are from 10 to one. So you have to watch the video or else you won't be able to answer it, right? There we go, okay. And we'll make this a little bit smaller so that we can, all right, sorry that I'm editing here as we go. <laughs> okay, so Sesame Street today. All right, so this is another video kind of about Sesame Street today. And, and we're focusing on Sesame Street because it is, so widely known um and you know i think it's hard to find a kid that hasn't ever watched sesame street so anyway so you're going to watch this video okay so you click here or click here one of the two what is something that you discovered after watching this video 
And then who is your favorite Sesame Street character? And why? My favorite Sesame Street character is Ernie because I love that he is obsessed with rubber duckies. Or, um, I don't know if you remember, they're like those little monster things that they're like, and they like, anyway, those always cracked me up as a kid. Anyway, okay. So then we are going to look at what paper bag puppets are. Okay, so you're looking, you're clicking this and watching this short video. Okay, what supplies would you need to build a paper bag puppet? And then you're gonna find and paste two pictures of other types of paper bag puppets on the green squares. So similar to what you did before, where you are copying and pasting. Okay, so there's a bunch of um, other resources just in case if you, um, you know, have any interest. So that's our look at puppetry for this week.